Here's the fence basically at one of its uh, maximum extremes at the far end, just to show that I um, have a full 54 inches of a uh, rip cut capability, if you can see the tape. Here's the assembled portions of the fence, so I'll take it apart or I'll flip it upside down and show you how it all goes together. On the bottom of the fence we have these two bolts which I drilled oversized and then tapped into this main fence beam and this allowed me to adjust this T to get it close and then I was flipped it back on the table, squared it as close as I could, flipped it back over, had it clamped and drilled this last hole um, which was a perfect tolerance fit and then I threaded it to fit the last bolt which acts as a lock. So this way I didn't have to weld both sides because not everybody can weld so I did it with bolts. It seems to work just fine. For the sliders on the bottom of the fence, I was going to use a piece of plastic like this here. Um, what I intend, or ended up using was these little nylon bolts to help with um, clearance issues I was having with this quarter inch plastic. It was just lifted a little bit too high above the table. So I used these nylon bolts and I just put a washer on them and drilled these holes oversized so all these do is just slip in here and they're just held down by the weight of the fence. And then when they wear, I just take them out if they ever do wear and put new ones in. Nice and simple. Here we have the fence secured with the uh, thumb adjustment screw on the other end and I'm just trying to show the the play in the end of the fence. This is probably about 40 or 50 pounds of pull and it can deflect it I'd say maximum about an eighth of an inch either way. Uh, I imagine that's far more than the cutting forces it's ever going to see unless you ram a sheet of three quarter inch MDF into the end or something. Um, considering my other fence moved about twice as much with about 10 times less force and I was still able to produce accurate cuts with it. I'm sure this will suit me just fine. I had shown this piece of plastic on the bottom of the fence. That was just to cover some ordered numbers that were written on the bottom of the seal. It's not actually on the belt of the fence. The only thing that keeps this fence from sliding or helps the fence slide is a single nylon bolt which is on the far end and the two nylon, bolt, nylon bolts that rest here and the two adjustment screws which ride on the fence and the locking bolt. Those are the only points of contact on the fence. And with this backed off, it slides pretty smoothly. I have yet to make, since the nylon bolt will jump into the track here when I slide it over, I'm just gonna probably put in a, a piece of oak wood in this track so I can slide over it a lot, a lot simpler. The other idea would just be to lengthen the uh, nylon or the last little nylon slider. If I made it long enough, it would gap over this just fine, but I don't use this miter slot very often, so I will just plug it for now as it's simpler. But other than that, it came out great. It's just a quick tip on the way I was, I was uh, told to uh, square a fence to the blade is to uh, make a cut on a piece of wood and you can see the back side of the blade or the teeth that were coming up on this blade were binding quite bad. So what I did is I adjusted the fence to pull the fence further away from the blade on the back side and made another cut. And you can see this cut, the binding was significantly less. So I went into my fence one more time and I turned the adjustment screw about another half turn and then I was able to make clean cuts and I could hear only the front of the blade cutting whereas the back of the blade wasn't catching the wood at all. And as far as I know that's the most accurate way to, or the most accurate way I know of to line up the blade to the fence.